Hello, my name is Brian Clay Ludloff, and I'm the stage director for Livermore Valley Opera's production of Madama Butterfly this March. I'm speaking to you from the University of Northern Colorado, where this morning the temperature was minus three degrees. So as you might imagine, I'm really looking forward to coming to California. I've been asked to tell you something about myself, so I would simply say that I'm kind of the accidental opera director, which is to say I'm a theater artist who chooses to work in opera. I love opera because it's the most collaborative of art forms, and I think among the theatrical forms, perhaps the most expressive, uh, the broad range of expression that different musical styles allow for. I'm also looking forward to this production, will be, which will be my fourth or fifth production of Butterfly, serving as either stage director or associate stage director with great directors like the artist Renato Scotto. So, uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I've learned a little something from each production. This will be my first production with the Livermore Valley Opera, and I'm delighted to work with Maestro Katzman and the wonderful uh, creative team that's been assembled, the designers, uh, the singers that we've cast, and I'm looking forward to making new discoveries with our production at Livermore. Madama Butterfly comes along about midway in Puccini's compositional career, premiered in 1904. And it provides something of a bridge for us from those late 19th century romantic verismo operas into the 20th century. Uh, my musicology colleagues uh, like to uh, diss Puccini a little bit and say that perhaps the music is a bit of a confection and not deserving uh, uh, of uh, some of the accolades it receives. I disagree. I think it's marvelous music. It's very theatrical music. Uh, and particularly as you get to, to Tosca and Madama Butterfly, La Boheme, uh, the depth of uh, e emotion that's written into the harmonic structure, the soaring melodies, uh, the wonderful music that Puccini writes, evocative of the drama and the emotional quality, uh, is I think exactly what's needed. It's also very forward thinking when you look at, uh, particularly at Puccini's orchestration and his harmonic uh, a use of harmonic structure. It's very forward thinking into the 20th century and that's particularly true of Madama Butterfly. Puccini was really a man of the world, but more importantly he was a man of the theater. He was a very serious composer who took his work very seriously, but he had an innate understanding of the theater, how it works, what would work on stage. The other thing about Madama Butterfly is with respect to Puccini's compositional career is he's at a point in his career where he keeps working with something. There are many different versions of Madama Butterfly. In his, uh, earlier in his career, he's producing roughly an opera a year or every other year uh, without a lot of revisions, without revisiting those, those early operas, Le Vili and some of the others. Uh, by the time we get to Madama Butterfly, he's constantly revising, constantly working, constantly looking forward to, to ways he might improve his own work uh, and thereby improve the theatrical product. So with Madama Butterfly, I think we have, in the various different versions, I think we have a really mature theatrical work representing some of this composer's uh, best work, I think. It's very difficult opera to produce uh, and to cast uh, three, four very important principal roles, very difficult to sing, and in particular the role of Cho Cho San, who is called Madama Butterfly. Her name is Cho Cho San. Uh, she's supposed to be a geisha, um, quindiciani, uh, Italian for 15. She tells, uh, uh, tells her gathered guests that she is a 15-year-old bride. Of course, not uncommon in uh, the Japanese culture of the early 20th century, certainly not uncommon for a geisha uh, of the period, um, but uh, somewhat shocking to the Westerners involved, to Sharpless and to Pinkerton, that she is that young. Um, so it's a difficult role to cast in that the character needs to appear to be a young Japanese girl, but the singing that's involved is very mature, heroic, grand lyric singing uh, in the veristic tradition. Um, Chocho-san is on stage almost the whole time. She rarely leaves the stage for the opera. And while she's on stage, she's singing often over a very large orchestration and singing uh, um, music of great emotional depth, saying goodbye to her child, 
uh, um, explaining to her child how they have to go begging uh, and they're homeless now that now that his father has abandoned them um, uh, in the in the moments just before she she dies in the tragic ending of the opera um, it, it's a big emotional sing in, in opera it's what we call a big sing uh, and since our performances are on consecutive nights it would really be inhumane to ask a soprano to do that so we're delighted to work with two really really fine sopranos alternating performances this will be the first time, uh, to my knowledge, that they will be singing Cho Cho San. Uh, uh, and that's always a very exciting thing in, in the life of singer, to take on an epic role like Butterfly, uh, like Tosca. Um, to take on these roles for the first time is a great adventure, and I'm looking forward to, to working with these two fine sopranos and with the whole cast on preparing this opera. Our production itself will be what many people consider to be traditional, which is to say that uh, we're keeping it uh, in time and place, we're keeping it in the, in the period, early 20th century, keeping the setting in Nagasaki, uh, maintaining the idea of the traditional unit set, which is to say there won't be a lot of scene changes, although our scenic designer Jean-Francois has created some wonderful visual images to give variety uh, uh, to the shifting emotional quality of the scenes. Um, but it will be, in many respects, what an audience who knows this opera would expect to see. Where I hope it will, will be different and unique is that we're approaching this work from a place of complete cultural authenticity, which is to say that uh, we're doing our homework. We want to understand Japanese culture in the early 20th century. We want to stand, understand American culture in the early 20th century. Uh, uh, we want to understand cultural traditions. You know, all of the female characters in Madame Butterfly, except for Kate Pinkerton at the very end, come from the world of the geisha life, all of the geishas that appear in Act One, uh, her family members. Uh, uh, Butterfly's family attends the wedding in Act One, and when we say family, I believe that we're talking about her geisha family. When a girl enters the geisha life, she uh, belongs to a specific geisha household that has essentially a mother, the, the, a woman who would run the geisha. Um, her patrons might in fact be called uncle in the euph euphemistic sense. Um, uh, so Uncle Yakuside uh, is perhaps not a blood relative but one of the patrons of this geisha establishment. So it's necessary for us to understand the cultural values and norms of the geisha life. I'm really looking forward to this production of Madame Butterfly with the Livermore Valley Opera, working with Maestro Katzman, uh, the scenic designer, the lighting designer, Kevin Bouch. Uh, our creative team is putting together a very exciting and compelling production for you. And particularly if you know this opera, you won't want to miss it.